So we have a 2018 Ford Edge with a check engine light on. So let's uh, hook up the scan tool, which I already plugged in the, uh, the interface. Let's go ahead and start a scan. We'll probably do a complete scan on this one just to see what codes are in modules. Sorry for that flickering. Code scan, pre-scan. I do have it running, but it doesn't matter normally. We're gonna go through and do a complete scan right off the bat. We have an engine code, unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum, pending DTC. Um, so that's gonna be our focus. We're gonna have an EVAP problem. I think we can diagnose this uh, from the driver's seat without doing any underhood testing, but we will, uh, once we are pretty sure what's going on, we'll, we'll pop the hood anyways and confirm, assuming we can get the vehicle to act up. Our code scan is almost done, and we have some various other codes, but no, none of those are going to cause an engine light. Let's go to our engine system, and what we're going to do is we're going to do the EVAP test, or at least one of the tests. So I'm going to go to functional test, output controls. I don't want to do the complete EVAP test because I want to, uh, I want to prove out uh, what I think is going on. And what I think is going on is this uh, unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum. Normally when I see that, it's because the purge solenoid or the vapor management valve or whatever Ford wants to call it this year is leaking. So we're going to not touch the purge. We're going to go to the vapor blocking valve, which would be the vent solenoid. Uh, no, canister vent valve, that's what we want. I'm not sure what the blocking valve is. Maybe that's new for this year, but I want to close the vent solenoid. Now we need to find out if our purge is active so let's uh, modify this data list we're gonna go to custom deselect everything i just want some evap stuff here okay i think we got to change the list we got engine management and i need evap so no wonder the data pids weren't there that i needed okay now let's uh customize this and deselect everything and we just want the vent valve purge valve and I want fuel tank pressure, if they have it. Fuel tank pressure is right there. And let's see what else we got. That's probably about it. Should be good enough. Put this up in a list. I'm gonna put my fuel tank pressure on a graph here. I also want the purge and the vent. So when I run this test, if the purge solenoid is active, then this test won't be active. This test won't be valid, and I'll actually have to go under the hood and disconnect the purge solenoid. So I'm going to hit off. Okay, I just wanted to test it to find out if that actually dropped down. So what I need to do is I want to activate this, which is going to close the vent. Should turn off our purge our pressure should remain at zero or actually build up a little bit of pressure. But we're not, we're dropping down, dropping down. Okay, it came back up. Maybe it's just a little bit of a late reaction between that. No, our purge kicked back in. So it only let us run it for a few seconds. Maybe our, uh, our tank pressure got too low so it kicked it off. Yeah, I can actually hear it clicking. So I am going to disable the purge. I'm gonna unplug it so that we know for a fact that we're not getting some false control going to our purge solenoid. We're gonna recommand this. That way, if our tank pressure drops like that, we know that the purge is leaking vacuum. So I pulled the engine cover off for visual inspection and found a rat nest. I don't see any chewed up wiring or hoses, so we probably just need to remove their little nest. Should be good to go. Now over here on the purge solenoid, we have two check valves on the supply line. This vehicle is turbocharged, so the check valves help prevent boost from entering the fuel tank. Now we have two lines. One of them is going to go to the intake manifold. The other one's going to go to the fresh air intake tube. And then back there is our purge solenoid. 
we're going to have to disconnect the electrical connector from that valve. So our purge solenoid still shows a, a value here. But it's disconnected, so we don't have to worry about that. Okay. So we want to see our vent close, and we want our fuel tank pressure to increase in pressure just from the fuel you know, vaporizing in the tank, or we want it to remain flat. If it goes down in pressure, we know that the valve is leaking. Okay, it finally said, hey, uh, yeah, this thing just failed the circuit test. Let me turn that on. We can see that that activated. Our pressure is dropping, dropping, dropping. This means nothing. Uh, it's not connected. Our pressure got down to negative 0.58 PSI before the vent was shut off automatically. Probably do the same thing here again. So our next test is going to be to cap off the line going to that purge solenoid. We'll rerun this test and verify that we don't have any drop in pressure. We could also just throw a vacuum gauge on the back of that purge solenoid while the engine's running. See if it pulls it into a vacuum. If it pulls it into a vacuum, we know it's leaking. So I plugged off the line that goes back to the tank after I disconnected it from the solenoid. And now I have a vacuum hose connected to the purge solenoid. And we're gonna connect it to my vacuum gauge and see what it drops down to. So it drops down to 13 inches of vacuum. This should remain at zero because we have the electrical connector unplugged from the purge solenoid. It shouldn't have any vacuum flowing and it does. So that purge solenoid is definitely bad. It's leaking. But now that we have that line plugged, let's go ahead and jump back to the scan tool and retest the system. The tank should not pull into a vacuum at all now. So the vent closed and our pressure is not dropping. We're actually gaining just a really, really small amount as the fuel starts to vaporize in the tank. And it's hard to see there the amount of climb. Maybe if we zoom out a little bit, you can see it start to rise here. So here's probably where I clicked it on. We're starting to get a slight rise. And this will probably run for quite a long time. It's not gonna time out because we're not pulling the tank into a vacuum. And it'll take a long time to build up too much pressure to uh, cause it to sh open up that vent valve. But let's go ahead and open the vent valve. Our pressure drops back down. So confirmed, we need a EVAP purge solenoid or vapor management valve or whatever Ford wants to call it. Um, I normally just write down both terms for our service writer to call the dealership because if I give them the wrong term, they can't find it. Oftentimes, you give them the right term, they still can't find it. So I normally text over a picture as well. Any questions or comments, put those down below. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, I replaced the purge solenoid. Uh, I have the vehicle running now. It's slowly ramping up the purge solenoid and our pressure is kind of bouncing around here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit on, which is gonna activate our vent. Should disable our purge and we'll see what the, what the tank pressure does. Okay, so it didn't disable the purge right away, uh, but it did, uh, did ramp it down to pull us into vacuum. So I'm guessing we can do this test and we're also watching for vacuum decay in the tank. So we have a very, very slow decay here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and then back on. So we lost some pressure or some vacuum. It's turned the purge solenoid on about 8%. It's just trying to, uh, to build that vacuum back up just at a slow rate. Our vent is closed here. It shut off the purge and our vacuum stopped building. So the problem we had before is the vacuum would keep building to the point where we were uh, pulling too deep into a vacuum, it would open up the vent. So now the system's operating normal. Um, it's We could run an automated EVAP test, make sure that everything passes, but I'm sure it will. So for the sake of this video, I'll, uh, I'll just end it here. Thanks for watching. See you next time.